Well, hey, friends, good to be back again with you. We're back in my office now, and I'm wanting to go through this timeline a little bit more uh, when we think about uh, creation, redemption, and judgment. This is our third line now. And, you know, we went through creation and redemption already in my past videos. You can go back and look at those. But um, the third line is judgment, and they all work together. I want to show you something. Each one of these deal with seven days, seven feasts, and seven seals. And we're going to deal with that on our next video. But I want to begin by putting it together so you can see how it all works together. These are God's algorithms that we find in the Word of God. And what I mean by that is when we think about creation, and we think about what creation is, it's God taking us from Genesis 1-2, which says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the earth, right? So there was chaos on the earth, and the Spirit of God hovered o over it, uh, over the depths, and then it says on day one, God brought forth light. And this began the process of bringing us out of the chaos and into order to, to the place where on the seventh day, God rested. Okay, so that's, that's the message that you need to see that God created everything he did. He knew that our world was going to be a mess. He knew that. You need to, when you read the word of God as a whole, it, it doesn't take much to understand that. And, and the reason for that, and I'm just going to kind of give you something here that I, I didn't, I, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and just share this with you, that anything created outside of God is going to fail. There's only one that is good, that is perfect, and that's God. The whole reason for this redemption process is that once we come to faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus comes to live in us, now we have God in us. That's the whole plan, because you and I outside of God can't live perfectly. Just look at our world. So when we think about everything that God is doing, He's showing us, I'm going to take creation, and because of sin, it's going to, it's going to look at all the, the crap that we're putting out in our world today. Look how messed up it is, the pollution and everything that we're doing to destroy our creation. God's going to take the chaos and bring it to order. Now, even though we see those, those were seven literal days in which God created, we also find that one day to uh, uh, to the Lord is seven is a thousand years to us. Excuse me, and if you take the seven days as a whole, it's a seven thousand year plan. So creation not only talks addresses the six days of creation and the seventh day of rest, but it also speaks about the the bigger picture from beginning to end. And so the same thing with redemption. Just as chaos to order, we find redemption is to take fallen man and bring him into fellowship with God. And God gives us seven feast days to show how that's going to happen. Now, four of those feast days have already occurred, and there's uh, still three more, with the seventh one being tabernacles, which is a picture of us having fellowship with God. On the seventh day, the rest... The millennial kingdom will come and we will be tabernacling with the Lord for a thousand years and see how they go together. They work together. Now, when we get to the seven, to the judgment, this is the cleanup portion of it because you can't come to the place of order and you can't come to the place of fellowship, <coughs> excuse me, as long as you still have people out there or in, enemies out there that are working against it. So God says, I've got to bring judgment upon those enemies. Now, I can't bring judgment upon those enemies until I first bring in the people out that I want to be a part of my kingdom. Because if I judge them now, then they're going to get lost in the war. They're going to get lost in the shuffle. We're going to lose a lot of innocent people that have simply fallen because it's not their fault, but it is their problem. But um, so God says, I'm going to go into the highways and the and the and the hedges and the and the you know out in the field and compel them people compel everyone to come everyone that will come. That's what we're doing right now. That's what we do on our mission field. That's the work I do, is to compel people to come before judgment day, before the day of the Lord comes. And so that day is coming. And so uh, I want to share with you then, when we get into the judgment, what is that all about? 
And I, and I put it together with the six uh, seals in chapter 6 and the seventh seal, which opens up the first uh, trumpet in verse in chapter 8, verse 1. And this is the removal of all sin. Once sin is completely removed, then the creation and redemption can enjoy its place. God's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth, right? And so we're going to begin with indictments to wrath. And we're going to talk about that on our next segment. That's what I wanted to bring to you. Uh, I wanted to show you how all of these correspond together and how they work together. The indictment is God says, I can't judge unless there's two or three witnesses. And so when we get into the, the seals, no one, there was no one able to open up the seals because nobody was worthy to open up the seals. Nobody had been there in all those places. No one has defeated death, hell, and the grave. No one has actually um, been perfect. No, no one but Jesus Christ was able to do all that. So he is our witness. And then we find that as the witness of God, the one that's holding it is God. So God and his son Jesus are the two witnesses. So Jesus comes in chapter 5 of the book of Revelation and grabs the scroll from his father. He receives it from his father as the two witnesses. And now he's able to judge. And he's opening up the seals, breaking them open. And so that's the message in the book of um, uh, Revelation, speaking of judgment. We're going to talk about that next time. But the first thing I wanted us to see today, the most important part, is that if unless you see creation, redemption, and judgment working together, you can't understand the book as a whole. Because creation, redemption, and judgment run through the whole Bible. You see them everywhere. You see Sodom and Gomorrah, the judgment in Genesis. You see the judgment on the cross with Jesus. You see redemption everywhere, how God redeemed. All throughout the Bible, we find different places of creation where God made something new. God did something new that we've never seen before. I want you to know this runs all the way through the Bible, all three of these themes. These are main themes in the Word of God. And they're also God's algorithm. And what an algorithm is, it's a process, um, a, a series of events that brings forth a goal that you have in mind. So you put forth a process uh, in order to get the goal you want. Creation, God brought forth the process begins with light and ends with rest. And everything in, in between is to bring us to that outcome. Each one of these things, whether it's creation, redemption, or, or judgment, are God's algorithms to bring us to the place where God wants us to. Because judgment is the removal of all sin. And once all sin is, is removed, then we can, re we can enjoy our redemption and our new creation. It's a marvelous message. And it's all found in the Word of God. But what I wanted to show you is it's all one message. God has a plan, and He wants you to be a part of it. So come to Christ, put your faith in Him. He became sin for you, so you can have fellowship with Him. When we think about the last feast day, the tabernacle with God. Guys, I hope that you have a wonderful day. We're going to get on and, and talk about the um, judgment and in our next message. God bless you. See you then.